Hey guys, Armagun here. Today we're going to talk about the Lynx. This is the GM 6M Lynx made by Cero in Hungary. And uh, actually, this is going to be the takedown assembly and disassembly video because this thing is a beast. And there is very little out there on these things, that's even less that's actually in English. Um, again, Cero is made in Hungary. So any, any videos that I've seen that have been semi-instructional have been in Hungarian or some of the language that I don't understand. And as these are now available in Canada and the United States now, check out tacticalimports.ca. You can buy the gun right from them. They've got it somehow figured out that can be imported into the States as under, it's just a sporting rifle. But this is the real deal, Lynx GM6M, chambered in 50 BMG. They also do this thing in 12.8 uh, by 108. The 50 BMG round is 12.8 by 99. 108 round is even longer. That's typically, I think it's a Russian standard military chambering. But again, without further ado, I'll talk about this video in the overview video about this gun. This one's just going to be disassembly takedown. So here we go. First things first, gun is on safe. We're going to pop out the mag. Like huge mag, really, really nice quality magazines too. But again, that's for the other video. I'll talk more about that. Um, you want to double check that it's it's clear and safe. So we want to unlock the action by pulling out the, the folding charging handle here, lifting up. That'll pop your dust cover. It also disengages the bolt from the barrel. Pull back. See the chambers there is clear. And that also cocks the, uh, the, the hammer in this process too, which you'll need to disassemble the gun. So first things first. There is a little push pin. It's, it's, it's because it's a long recoil action, there's two different um, sets of recoil springs going on. There's one recoil spring that just runs the bolt, the other recoil spring that runs the barrel. So we're gonna pop one for the bolt out first and it's just retained. You just push it in, lift it up, and then it pops out. There's this long wiggly affair. That's that. Okay, so we'll set that down over here. We don't need this again until the end. Just set that off to the side. Next off, you can see there's a little large, sorry, not a little, a large screw. I'm gonna rotate that away. That's gonna allow the upper and the lower assemblies to hinge apart. And you don't need to do this next part, but I'm just gonna do it because I've, I just did it here and, and it made this assembly easier honestly made assembly easier um, and it's not very hard to do. You simply have to loosen this one little hex head, hex head bolt. Okay. And then you spin this little retainer 180 degrees. So I've loosened this off already. You spin that. So this little cutout lines up with this pin and then you simply knock out the pin. Which I will do here in a dummy a dummy round and a soft hammer. Pop that through as far as it'll go with this. And then I just have a Allen key to get it the rest of the way out. And there we go. So just a big cross pin. Okay. I want to keep back out. And now I can A, hinge this down because it, I undid the screw here. And now this will just also pull away. And I'll mention it again here. I would have talked about this in the main video as well, but the fit and finish and the tolerances on this thing are just beautiful. I was so blown away when I saw the fit and finish of this rifle. Like, yes, it's expensive. Even for your guys in the States, this is more than a Barrett M108. But the quality is superb um, and the functionality of this gun is just unbelievable. Like definitely check out my main video where I talk about it and go over the features. This thing is something else, but there's your lower, there's your trigger. So uh, the trigger isn't great, but I mean, it, it is a bull pop. Um, it's not that it's horrible, but it's, it's, it could be improved. Okay. Next up, we're going to leave this alone for a bit. We're going to come back over here to, well, we could, we could pop up the bolt at this point. Because that was the, this is the recoil system that runs in with the bolt. 
and powers that. So again, now the bolt is disengaged. All we have to do is, again, lift it up to disengage the lugs from the bolt or from the barrel. Pull this all back. And you can see both the bolt and the barrel run on this internal rail system that's milled right into the receiver. So that's, they run on those, on those steel rods. It's actually a separate assembly that's, that's dropped in there and bolted because it is steel on steel. Aluminum would wear out. Needs a bit of pressure to get it all the way out because there's a little spring-loaded tab on here that catches towards the end. Um, and this is your bolt. So we'll come back to this once the whole gun's taken apart because the bolt, while everything else is pretty simple to do, and with the exception of the exception of this uh, this tool, you don't need any tools to take it all down because um, you could disassemble the gun without pulling the lower off. Uh, you don't need any tools for this, but it is rather complex, and the instructions that I got are definitely uh, a little ESL, a little English, English as a second language in terms of how I think they were written. It was quite hard to under just understand them, and I basically had to figure this out myself, which was a bit intimidating. Um, it looks like a giant air bolt, honestly, but uh, massive ejector. Just, I can't even, I can barely push it down, and a uh, big clock extractor. So, pretty cool. I will, I'll get back to this. In a second. So back to the front of the gun. Here's where we need the tool. And it's just to get this break off. So there's just a notch in the barrel. There's just a 180 degree um, like cross pin. You just turn it over. You see it goes from flat to curved. And then it's a it's a lefty tighty righty loosey. So I'm just gonna break it off this way. I think I did that backwards, but we'll break it off this way. And, oh, this went over me here. You can also make adjustments to the brake itself because this is just the, the um, this is a different collar. The brake rounds to that and it's got a set screw here that, that just clamps it on. So that's a separate affair. That's the, uh, that's the brake and it's got Lynx laser engraved with a bit of a, a Lynx emblem in there, kind of cool. Nice break, really nice, nice construction. That leaves this bear. Now here, there's another collar that, um, if you're familiar with trilogs, it functions very similar to a trilog. This is what's capturing the main barrel um, spring. So push down, rotate slightly till it comes up, and there we go. Now this is just a, you're fighting the pressure as it comes over. You have to wiggle it over this little collar right there. Now it's off. That's this thing. You can see those those little lugs inside, so they can they can they correspond with these lugs here. They just slip over, spin it, and you can see it it latches in there. So that's so it for that. This is a huge spring, and uh, they actually when you when you buy the rifle, they give you two of these because this is what I guess could wear out, or if you store the um, they tell you not to store the rifle with the with the barrel collapsed because this is a collapsing barrel system. You can actually have the barrel locked all the way to the front. This little clasp clasps it and keeps it shut, which is awesome. It turns this entire package into such a small, compact, ready to go, you know, semi-automatic 50 BMG package, which is pretty sweet. But uh, anyways, I'm I'll digress. Uh, now the barrel can be popped out. So again, it's just riding on these rails. So you just coax it forward. Okay, off those wheels, and now it's just coming out. So check this thing out. Threaded, that locking collar, or that one collar, steps up for the, and then yeah, now it's it's really, like this is it's thick. And then this, oh, the receiver extension is pretty, uh, pretty crazy here. Massive lugs for those engaged. And this is really all it rides on in terms of rails um, that just connects with the steel rails. That's not very much. But an interesting thing to note is there is no gas hole in or gas port in this barrel. It's not drilled. This is solid all the way through. And that's cool for a couple reasons. One, um, this is a long recoil action, so it does not, it's not gas operated. Whereas most semi-automatic rifles rely on gas pressure being bled off of the, the barrel while the, you know, while the bolt's still in there. 
bleeding that off and, and forcing it back to the action to cycle the action. So this doesn't do that. Simply the weight of the projectile exiting the barrel, that oil system that pushes this all back together and it just functions based on recoil. The whole thing cycles all the way back with the, uh, with the bolt. It's pretty cool. I will demonstrate that in the actual video. This one again, I'm just more so focused on taking it apart and putting it back together because it is quite involved and there's nothing easy out there. So there's that little notch where you, uh, you rotate this, this pin on the brake. Okay, that's that. This is the upper, which is mostly aluminum. It's actually quite lightweight. That's where your barrel goes in. This is where your, essentially this is the op rod, or the, you know, it looks like a long piston, but it's not. Basically just your op rod and that slides in there. So pretty cool. That's also where this long spring is riding in a smaller hole, running right through. This guy goes right into there. And then obviously your, your other spring is captured back there and it's only, it's only going forward. So uh, at this point in time, you could also spin off your bipod if you wanted to. Um, that's also got the latch for, for locking the barrel down though. So you probably don't want to lose that functionality. Um, yeah, okay, I'll leave that there. Now we'll just focus on the bolt. Okay. Oh, so. I'm actually, based on the length of this video, I think I'm gonna break it into two. There's gonna be the disassembly video, and there's gonna be the reassembly portion, because I'm already over almost 12 minutes here. So I'll pull the break, the, the bolt apart here, and then we'll we'll cut it, and we'll do another one. Okay, so. This thing, and you don't need any tools, but it's, it's handy to have something small to pick at something with. There's a little spring here that basically forces, prevents this from being turned off. And this is basically a little screw that retains the, the firing pin. Um, so we'll just pop this. Pop this up, like so. Now, next tricky, this is it's just finicky. So I found it's best to because then you get to get this little thing out. So you just kind of rotate it through. Well, this is going to make it much better for me this time. Um, unfortunately, it's even harder to get back in. So pull that out. Set it down. And again, there's no really great way to... like The instructions aren't super clear about this. And it's it's all... There aren't diagrams. It's kind of just verbal instructions. And again, translated loosely from one language to another. So also really quickly, like take time to admire like these roller bearings. Like this is such a slick, you know, slick action. I just, I just love this thing. It's so, so cool. Um, anyways, now you can spin this off. So we'll do that. It's under tension because there's the, the firing pin is pushing up on it. And then the firing pin is its own spring. So you can push down the firing pin to take the tension off this, rotate this up. Um, I like to just set this down. You can see it's the thicker end goes down. The uh, one that's turned down slightly less diameter stays out. Set that down. Now you can uh, pull your firing pin out. So this guy, a spring in there too. Pop that out. Now this part's a little interesting. This is all just kind of tightly fit together. And right now this is still under tension because um, we had to rotate it up and lock the bolt in order to pull it out from the barrel. So there's a little release tab right here. So you want to basically take pressure off of it, push it down, and then allow the bolt to close. Basically this is how it would close once it's in the barrel. They just rotate slightly. And then this is also under spring tension, so um, the best way to kind of do this is just to to either this this right here is separate. This comes up and off, and this goes down. But there's a big spring that controls this this the, the torque on that bolt there. This this act this um, movement, and that's captured. Or there's a little tab where it locks. I'll, I'll show you in person later. It'll be easier. Or sorry, basically you just want to detach those things. So. The easiest way I do it is I just tap, tap this bolt down a little bit. We hear a bit of a snap, and that'll just be the spring disengaging. There we go. So that's out now. So now we can loosen this guy. Again, these aren't um, reversible parts, so you want to keep uh, pay attention to what direction these go. So I just kind of set everything down, oriented the way it goes back together. So that's off and now your bolt's free to come out. And here's that giant, like really tight spring that I was talking about. So that just captures in there. And then this 
part of it right here hooks up in this uh, can you see it it's right up in here it's hard to see with the camera here there's a there we go there's a, there's a little lug right up there and that has to catch this other side of the spring so basically that's what you know it's captured there it's captured there and then you're you're twisting it that's what's where that torque is coming from so this is basically just your your bolt carrier then that's that little uh little release latch or retaining latch and yeah there you go guys that's the bolt fully kind of you can take this pin off or that, that coil off as well that's about as disassembled as i'm going to take it everything else is just like your in your heavy claw extractor your massive ejector um so those are just roll held in with roll pins you have to punch those out and and to, to change them out so that's good for now um next video i'll put this thing back together and then the other one is just check out the video in general because it's a the overview where i talk about this gun it's awesome and i'm not sure if i'll have time to do it yet but i will at some point be doing a shooting video this is a non-restricted weapon so it's legal to own with a possession and acquisitions license or your pal in canada and being a non-restricted firearm i can fire this in my backyard now lots of people like to freak out about these guns because they're like semi-automatic center fire bull pup you know all these crazy things truth be told this gun is 15 grand before tax it takes like six months plus to get in because they're made to order um, from tactical imports so realistically like no criminal is going to use this gun and anyone that wanted to plan something have to plan so far in advance it'd be ridiculous also at this time of the making in this video there's only maybe 30 35 of these in canada they're pretty rare uh, i'm talking to the manufacturer they tend to or sorry the, the importer you tend to see about three or four a year these things coming in but awesome guns i kind of throw these out on my instagram pretty often so i like to like to hope that i'm helping getting more of these out there because they're such cool such cool guns and i think they're not really known about they're not well known and they're not really fully appreciated for how well built and and honestly cool they are it's a ton of fun to shoot quite accurate as well i'll talk more about this in the other video i'm just doing this this assembly video first and i probably shouldn't have because i'm saying too much stuff that i should have saved for the other videos but anyways guys thanks a lot part two coming up and check out the other video and shooting videos as well thanks bye